Let's talk about what a Pokemon food web would look like in Chargestone Cave. Chargestone Cave is located in Western Unova and connects Route 6 with Mistralton City and is characterized by having a special magnetic field and contains stones that either generate or have stored electricity. Cave ecosystems are unique in that they rely on an influx of nutrients from other habitats since sunlight and therefore producers can only really exist near the entrance of the cave. Chargestone Cave likely has various mosses and ferns that exist near the cave's entrance, and these are going to be our first producers. Some of these mosses even form a symbiotic relationship with another producer, our first Pokemon, in Ferocid. Ferocid can be found growing on the walls of the caves, absorbing minerals from the rocks to help form its hard outer shell. This moss helps to increase the photosynthetic properties of Ferocid since it grows in such a dim environment. In the anime, we can see that Furrow Seed, when exposed to rocks collected from Chargestone Cave, can create an immense amount of moss, suggesting that Furrow Seed is able to harness this raw electricity for its own use, making it what I'm going to call an Electivore. But Furrow Seed isn't the only Electivore in this habitat, as we can also find the Pokemon Clink in Chargestone Cave. Clink is an obligate Electivore, meaning that it can only derive the energy needed to support itself from environmental electricity. This is going to make Ferocid a facultative Electivore, meaning that it can consume electricity, but it's not explicitly required for its survival, as we can find Ferocid in other non-electrical environments. I'm going to place Clink into our C1 level, or our primary consumers, since it does consume electricity. Did you know that organisms that consume electricity just like Clink exist in real life? Because I sure didn't before I made this video. But there are a bacteria in the genera Schuanella and Geobacter that utilize electrons harvested from rocks and metals just like in Charged Stone Cave. Other organisms like you and I also utilize electrons, but we get ours from the stored energy in food. Our cells are then able to break down these sugars and fats that we consume until the electrons are released. Then, the oxygen that we breathe attracts the electrons, which create a current that then completes the chemical reaction to provide the cells with the energy that they need. These electric bacteria, and possibly Pokemon like Clink, can cut out the food middleman entirely and go straight for the electrons that are needed to power themselves. Which is just fascinating, but let's get back to our food web. Other primary consumers include the many animals that are required to form a functioning food web. In cave systems, these are going to be invertebrates feeding on the many mosses and ferns at the cave's entrance, such as crickets and beetles. Lepidopterans, such as butterflies and moths, also fit in here that may take refuge in the cave overnight or during stormy weather. Next up, we have secondary consumers that are going to feed on these mini invertebrates, animals such as spiders and centipedes, and a Pokemon such as Woobat, Swoobat, Tynamo, and Drillbird. Woobat and Swoobat aren't catchable on this route in the game, but I thought it was only fitting to include this region's only bat Pokemon into this food web since we are talking about a cave ecosystem. Our next secondary consumer is a peculiar one in that it is primarily parasitic, and that is Joltik. Ecologically, Joltik is very similar to modern day fleas and ticks, but instead of feeding on blood, they feed on electricity. In Charged Stone Cave, Joltik might be able to harness environmental electricity similar to Ferocid and Clink, but it appears that they prefer to latch on to other Pokemon. In this instance, it's possible that Tynamo, Clink, or Ferocid act as the primary host. Our first tertiary consumer is Galvantula, feeding on both flying insects and our hypothetical Woobat and Swoobat. The large size and beneficial typing would allow Galvantula to really take advantage of any woos and swoos roosting in the cave. Galvantula also isn't catchable in the game, but it is known to inhabit charged stone thanks to the anime. Like Galvantula, our other tertiary consumer is also a filter feeder and is surprisingly Nosepass. Nosepass's Emerald Pokedex entry says that it feeds on prey that is pulled in by its magnetic force. It mostly feeds on the same insects that cave spiders might, but could also occasionally pull in a Tynamo or a Joltik. Like we mentioned earlier with Ferocid, Nosepass might also be another facultative Electivore to help supplement its energy requirements if prey levels are low. Lastly, we have our Quaternary Consumer and our Apex Predator, Bull. Boldor hunts through echolocation much like modern-day insectivorous bats, or Woobat and Swoobat, and this allows it to hunt even in the farthest and darkest recesses of Chargestone Cave. 
Its rock typing would allow it to prey on Galvantula, Tynamo, and sleeping wounds who bets. Before we wrap up, remember that no food web is complete without your detritivores, which consume decaying material and are important for nutrient recycling. In cave environments, these are going to be things like millipedes and fungi, and Pokemon that fit this role might be Tynamo scavenging carcasses, as well as Fungus and Moongus sapping up excess nutrients on the cave. And that completes our Pokemon food web of Chargestone Cave. Let me know what other Pokemon food webs you want to see in the future, and remember to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this one, and thanks for watching.